Oops, let's get this flipped right side up. There we go. All right, welcome back, guys. So this is our notes for mitosis. And if you do not have a copy of the foldable that you picked up in class, then you're going to want to print one off of Canvas. Or if you want to, you can just pause the video, draw this out, and then you can take your notes that way. It's up to you. First step we're going to need to do on this foldable is we're going to take the left side of the foldable. We're going to fold it to this line right here that's running vertically. Then we're going to need a pair of scissors. We're going to open up the foldable and we are going to cut from the edge along these lines as straight as we can to the fold. Just like so. And two. a lot of pressure to cut things on camera <laughs> and four all right there we go so this foldable <clears throat> is gonna have five segments over here on the left and we're gonna talk about how it's organized now so I've got two sections on this foldable over here on the left side we've got everything that happens in interphase so here's interphase and let's start by talking about the things that happen in interphase. So step one in interphase is that the cell is going to grow. That's going to be G1, as we've already learned. From there, if the cell needs to divide, it's going to continue along into the next phase, which is where the DNA replicates. So that means we're going to end up with those duplicated chromosomes. Remember, that is synthesis, so that is S phase. From there... The cell continues getting ready for mitosis in G2 phase. The cell cycle is going to happen when organisms need to grow, when organisms need to repair an injury, or when organisms, especially unicellular uh, eukaryotic organisms, need to reproduce. And this is asexual reproduction. We end up with an identical copy of the original organism. Now you are responsible for knowing and being able to identify what phase of the cell cycle a picture of a cell is in. So let's look at this picture. This one is an interphase. So we have animal cell in interphase and plant cell in interphase. Let's label the parts of this just so we have this to reference. All right, so first up, let's start with the outside structure here. And remember the outside structure is the cell membrane. So let's put cell membrane down. We're going to draw a line. And all cells have cell membranes. Now on a plant cell, that cell membrane is this little line just on the inside. Make sure we're focused here. There we go. The next structure is going to be the cell wall. Remember, only plants have a cell wall. And that's that thick outer coating that's made up of a carbohydrate called cellulose. So the cell wall is there for support. Next up, we've got this little circle inside. That's going to be our nucleus. And of course, all eukaryotic organisms have a nucleus. Then inside that nucleus, we've got this fuzzy stuff. And that's going to be our DNA. Then last but not least, you have the nucleolus inside of the nucleus. We're not going to label that, but just notice that it's here. The last structure we are going to label are these little things. They look like little cylinders, and then they have this fuzzy stuff around the outside. These are called centrioles. And they're going to play a big role in the cell cycle. All right, so when a cell is in interphase, the DNA looks like spaghetti and the nucleus is present. That's going to be important when we move into the next phase. What I want you to notice is this DNA, because it is loosely packed, if we think back to the levels of genetic organization, this DNA is chromatin. So that's going to be chromatin. It's still DNA. It's just not in a chromosome form yet. 
From here, once we finish going through interphase, so G1, S, and G2, the cell is then going to move into the stage of mitosis. And this is called M phase. Let me grab a different color of marker for M phase. Mitosis is where the nucleus and the cell are going to both divide. Now, this foldable is a little weird in that it goes in order from G1, S, G2, and then into mitosis. But the steps of mitosis are ordered one, two, three, four, and five. Then we go back into G1. So make sure you know that this top foldable here, this top flap, that's step one of M phase, then step two, step three, step four, and step five. All right, let's talk through what happens in each step of mitosis. So first step of mitosis is called prophase. Now I'm gonna make a little note on here that G2 is up here and then we go to prophase. So here's what happens in prophase. At this point, chromosomes or the DNA, the chromatin, this spaghetti stuff over here, is going to condense and they're going to become visible. So we end up with that X-shaped chromosome. Now remember the X shape has two halves. The left half is called a chromatid and the right half is called a chromatid. Each half, left and right, are identical to one another because the DNA was copied during S phase. So you can see in our picture, the chromosomes have formed and look at what's happened to our nucleus. There's holes in it. That's because during prophase, the nuclear membrane, the border around the nucleus, is breaking down and disappearing. All right, so that's prophase. From prophase then, we go into the next phase, which is metaphase. Metaphase starts with the letter M, and we're gonna write the word middle underneath metaphase. If we look at the pictures, notice where the chromosomes are. They are lined up in the middle, hence why we wrote middle under metaphase. So in this stage, duplicated chromosomes, those X's, are going to line up in the middle along the equator. Then it says something forms. Well, the thing that forms is called spindle fibers. Think of spindle fibers like fishing lines. The little centriole that we talked about earlier is right here. And that little centriole shoots out these spindle fibers and the spindle fibers are like fishing lines in that they are trying to catch something. But instead of a fish, they're trying to catch a chromosome. So if I were to draw the chromosomes a little bit larger here, here's my centriole, here's the other centriole. Those are really bad star shapes. That little spindle fiber is gonna shoot out of that centriole and grab on to the middle of the chromosome. So we're gonna say spindle fibers form and attached to chromosomes. Once the spindle fibers are attached to the chromosomes, we move into anaphase. This is the third phase of mitosis. The A in anaphase helps us remember that things are coming apart in this phase. So if you look at our picture, those spindle fibers have done what fishing line does. They got reeled back in. And as the spindle fibers are pulled back towards the centrioles, half of the duplicated chromosome goes with. So you can see we have half of the chromosome here and the other half of the chromosome is over here. 
So now we have unduplicated chromosomes, and we have one of each of those on each side of the cell. Now remember, half of the chromosome was called a chromatid. So since half the chromosome is going to the top and the bottom, we're going to say sister chromatids separate and move apart to opposite sides of the cell. So that's the apart. Once the chromosomes have been pulled to the ends of the cell, they're going to continue moving until they're almost at the very, very tips. And then we move into a phase called telophase, or it can be said telophase. Either one works. The T in telophase helps remind us that this is where we get two nuclei. Nuclei is the plural of nucleus. So in telophase, the nucleus, and you can see it kind of happening here, and definitely happening in the plant cell, the nucleus is reforming. So instead of it breaking down, the membrane's coming back. So the nuclear membrane forms around each group of unduplicated chromosomes. Because remember, the duplicated chromosomes, the X shapes, got pulled apart last phase, and now they're unduplicated. At this point, once the two nuclei form, then we move into the last step of M phase, which is not actually mitosis. And this last stage is called cyto, which means cell, kinesis. So cytokinesis. We'll use the C to remind us that this is where the cell divides. So this is where the cell membrane is actually going to split. So you can see that it looks a little bit different in animal and plant cells. In an animal cell, if my hands are the cell membrane, the cell membrane is going to start to pinch in and pinch in and pinch in until it touches and we have two different cells. Now, if we go back to the telophase, you'll notice that you can start to see the cell pinching in here. That area that pinches in is called the cleavage. Cleave means to slice. Furrow. Furrow is like a ditch. So the place where the cell pinches in is called the cleavage furrow. And you can see in the animal cell over here on the cytokinesis tab, the cells are now two different cells. Plant cells are a little different. Because plant cells have that tough cell wall on the outside, instead of being able to just pinch in half, they actually build a whole new cell wall in between the two nuclei that have formed, and that cell wall is going to split the cell in half. Either way, we're going to say that the new nuclei that have formed are packaged into separate cell, and the cell and the cytoplasm are going to divide. Remember, cytoplasm is the gel in the cell, but it's also the organelles. So we have mitochondria. So like this half of the cell is gonna get some mitochondria, this half's gonna get some mitochondria. Or in this case, this cell's gonna have some mitochondria and this one will get some mitochondria. Ultimately, by the time mitosis and cytokinesis has finished, we end up with two identical cells. You have cell cloning that happens naturally. Once you have those two cells, those cells are then going to go back into G1 phase. So we go from here back in to G1. All right, so that's the process of mitosis as well as a review of the cell cycle. If you have any questions about this information, let me know. Thanks for watching and keep asking questions.